<clears throat> All right, what's up, everybody? Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me. Starting off up close here with the Geek Vape Aegis Boost Plus. Now, I never got to use the original Aegis Boost, but this Boost Plus has been, I mean, literally nothing but awesomeness to me. This is the one that I've been using for about three weeks now, every single day, not exclusively every single day, but for very long periods every single day. This is my, anytime I'm out of the office, I'm using this. It's my bedside table vape. It's my coffee table vape. It's my driving in the car vape. It's got that patented Geek Vape Aegis sort of styling and ruggedness to it. Lots of rubber on it for shock proof. It's dust proof. It's water resistant, like up to a meter deep. Got that same faux leather and stitching that the Aegis stuff is known for. It's a little bit squishy. Looks very cool. These come in kind of a rainbow of different colors. My personal favorite that I kind of want to go out and buy is the full red one. I think they call it Devil Red or something like that. So this utilizes is an 18650 and you open it the same way you do any Aegis product. This one actually is much smoother and easier to open, not like the Max. You don't need like a tool to get it open. You can just unscrew it. 18650 on the inside, which we're going to be swapping out right now because the battery was dying. That's what you do when your battery is dying. You can also charge it here if you want to with a little micro USB. Really bums me out that that's not a USB-C in there. And honestly, I would suggest pulling your battery right out of your device to charge it. Put it on a proper 18650 charger for safety reasons. <coughs> kind of a slick little textured fire button there. It's nice and clicky. Got a little adjustment up down buttons that are also slightly clicky. It's got a really nice screen here. I really prefer this to all the other Aegis stuff. The Aegis Max has that really old school digital, you know, LCD looking screen. This one is much more pretty. Shows you everything you need to know. Resistance, amp limits, voltage, how many toots you've taken, shows you your wattage. This light up part right here is your battery level indicator, which is actually really very useful, much more useful than a lot of other displays. Three clicks will let you start adjusting things. You can set it to power mode, which is really the only way that I use it, but it does have a full temperature con control suite that I just don't use because I don't use temperature control. We're going to set this back to power mode. So like I showed you earlier, this is the airflow adjustment and I just rocket full completely open it's restricted enough being completely open but you can close this down however much you like to adjust the draw to however you know you like it one thing i love about this is it's not just magnetically held in there there's actually a little clip right here that you press and your whole pod can come off after a few weeks of use it stays completely completely clean in here just no leaking, no little spittles of juice anywhere. It's, it's beautiful to behold. Beautiful to behold? All right. Filling up the tank is also really wicked easy. You just pop this open right here. This kind of actually pivots out of the way, which I love that. The tank itself, yeah, it's a little smoky, but it's not impossible to see how full you're filling it. This is a five and a half mil capacity, by the way. Yep, yeah, bump. Boom. When you close this off, up here is really where you're going to see the only sort of like, you know, liquid residue, obviously. Now let's take a quick look at a brand new one so I can show you the coil head and the stock drip tips that it comes with. Whistle tip! Right there! How old school is that whistle tip? Now this is just a drip tip on here. Standard 510 drip tip and at first I was using the whistle tip and I thought wow this is so cool. Turns out I find it completely obnoxious because I don't really hold my device the same way every single time. So you can kind of adjust it if you hold it like this most of the time. Adjust the drip tip so that it's hitting you like a whistle tip should. Thankfully they also include a round 510 drip tip or like I've done on mine you can kind of just use any 510 drip tip that you want. Got to press the button, click the pot out. Thankfully this does come with that little geek vape sort of tool for getting your coil heads in and out. You can use your your fingernails to try to get this out. Uh, it works eh, most of the time but it's much easier just to use this little tool. It gives you a little bit of leverage 
coverage. These coil heads are just press fit in here with all held on with O-rings. They say that these are future proof compatible. So if you stock up on a whole mess of the GV boost coils, they should continue to work with future releases from Geek Vape. At least that's how I understand it, which if that's true, that's great. There's nothing worse than stocking up on a bunch of coil heads that are useless. So obviously you'd put a few drops of liquid down here into the mesh and cotton. There's flat spots on the coil head. There's flat spots on the tank. You just gotta line those up. Boop, press it in, fill it up from the top, adjust your airflow, you're good to go. Now this is all gonna go back in the box cause it's it's going to somebody else. They just, uh, they just don't know it yet. And Oh yes, that little that little click right there locking your tank in is just so great, so satisfying, and so reassuring. There's so many AIOs out there that are just held in by magnets and they don't really give you that nice sense of a secure connection. So it's nice to see the Aegeus giving me that, giving me that click, baby. So yeah, that's really all there is to it. Uh, it fits real comfortable in the hand. Uh, it's really conducive to the way that I like to vape by hitting it with my finger. Kind of. It's comfortable to hold it like this, but okay. Let, we'll, we'll just talk about that when we get back out to normal view. Let's get back out to normal view and let's vape it. Normal view. Yeah, awesome. Really great vape experience from this. The airflow, it's nice and restricted as it should be. I feel like maybe in a pod, you don't want it to be too much like a sub-ohm tank because you're just going to tear through more liquid that way. Even though this has a five and a half mil capacity, it still does like to, uh, still likes to tear through liquid. Also 0.4 and 0.6, final answer. Those are, the those are the coil heads you get with this, a 0.4 and a 0.6. I've exclusively been using the 0 0.4 ohm coil head in here for weeks, at least three weeks, maybe a little bit longer. And the only reason I didn't review this earlier is because I wanted to see how long this coil head would last and it, like it just keeps going. It's only now after weeks of fairly heavy use that I'm starting to get a little bit of that like, uh, you know, uh, soggy flavor that kind of comes with an aging coil head. The airflow starts constricting a little bit because your cotton's breaking down and you get a little bit of that soggy flavor. That's the only way I can describe it is soggy. Still is honestly vaping great. So like I was saying, it is real conducive to holding it the way that I like it and hitting the fire button with my finger. But there's, there's one downside to this. As your tank is draining, if you hold it like this, your coil head is on this side of the tank and all your liquid is going to be draining away from your coil head. So when your tank is draining, you kind of have no choice but to hold it like this and hit it with your thumb. You have to keep that liquid at your coil head and that's kind of a bummer to me. Maybe if it was, I don't know, centered? I don't know, I don't have a solution for this. I do know that your coil head is on one side of the tank so you kind of have to hold it like this if you wanna keep all your liquid towards that coil head, which trust me, you definitely wanna do. Other than that and other than the micro USB, I don't know why they included micro USB. It's the Boost Plus, should have been USB-C. We need to make USB-C just the standard format for charging. It's water resistant up to a meter for up to 13 minutes or something like that. It's dust proof, it's shock proof, it's, it's Aegis, you know, it's Aegis quality. It's what I like to call beefy. It just vapes so well. I really enjoy the vape from this. Now, right now, this is only a coil head based tank, but according to the Geek Vape website, they do have not just a 510 connection coming out that clips in here in very much the same fashion, but they also have a very interesting looking RDTA attachment for it as well that's gonna house like a deck with coils on it and your wicks are gonna go down into the tank and it kind of becomes an RDTA. I just think that level of versatility in this, not even to mention that it has a removable 18650, replaceable 18650 in it, that kind of versatility really kind of puts the, the Geek Vape Aegis Boost Plus on kind of a better level, on kind of a different level. There are other AIOs out there that use a pod or you can put a 510 connection on there, but they're all magnetic. And the way Geek Vape did this with a very secure clip, I would personally feel 
very comfortable putting a 510 connection on here and clicking it down and having it be that much more secure rather than just magnets. I don't even know what else to say. Uh, you can lock your wattage if you hold these two buttons right here. You're gonna see it go into locked mode and you can still fire it, but you just can't adjust your wattage up and down. Hold these again and it should go bing, unlocked, and now you can adjust your wattage again. I really like this screen just a lot. So let's do the vape budget hands. Are you gonna need your vape budget hands if you wanna check out the Geek Vape, Aegeus, Boost Plus? No, not really. Looking around the internet, you can kind of find it anywhere from like 40 to 45 bucks, which, I mean, that, it kind of seems like a no-brainer. If we were gonna play the Aliens game or the FDA game where they have nothing left to vape and, and, and not, they came and take everything. I got nothing left to vape. Is the Geek Vape Aegis Boost Plus something I'm gonna seek out and buy right away? Here's the thing, probably not right away. Like it's not gonna be the first thing I buy right out of the gate. I'd kinda honestly rather get the Aegis Max kit before I go for like a smaller AIO pod, but I love having a smaller AIO pod with me. And as far as smaller AIO pods go, I think for pure durability and versatility, it's hard to go wrong. You can't miss. I, th I think the Geek Vape Aegis Boost Plus beats them. I guess one other con would be it, it's not small, you know? <laughs> when you go for an AIO type of thing, you kind of want something a little bit smaller, you know, a little bit more compact, maybe a little bit more lightweight for the average person. It, it's just big. It's not overly big, but it, it's large. It's larger than some other AIOs out there. Anyway, I, that's enough rambling for me. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you guys so much for watching. I can't put links down in the description anymore because of YouTube, but it is what it is. You're gonna have to use your Google Foo. Geek Vape Aegis Boost Plus coming uh, very, very, very highly recommended. And remember, no matter what anybody tells you, vaping is still at least 95% less harmful for you than burning combustible tobacco cigarettes. So yeah, absolutely, you guys. Let's keep on vaping.